Good day, everyone. My name is Joël Eba. Today, we'll be talking about API design first with Swagger Hub and Azure API management. Let me ask you a question before we begin. Are you looking to move to an API first design? Are you utilizing code first today and looking to have that paradigm shift? Look no further with Azure API management and a complementary service in Swagger Hub, what we're looking to do here is introduce the first steps, combine both, and see how they are complementary when utilized together. Azure API Manager at Swagger Hub enables you to have better collaboration by doing API first design and enabling it into Azure API Management. We can have some certain benefits by doing so, uh, like uh, evaluating the design contract beforehand and looking at security flaws earlier in the SDLC. Let's take a look at the, um, the different methodologies and how we can enhance the way that you can do API first design with Azure API Management. So first and foremost, let's talk about code first and design first, uh, two different paradigms. Um, I like to call this the battle of priority. So on one side, you have speed, one side, you have quality. What we want to do here is discuss the different personas at hand, API product owner, product manager, could be a project manager and the developer. Let's take a look at some of the battles of priorities here. So developers are eager to code and API product owners uh, who are insisting on clear API contracts. A second notion, developers argue that time spent on design delays actual implementation. Product managers worry that hasty development leads to technical debt and maintenance nightmares. By evaluating these sort of battles of priorities here from these two different personas, you can kind of get the pros and cons from code first, where I want to go ahead and code, get my ticket done, move along, let's get this to production, versus the scenario where you are API product owner and time to first call is important, but you want to have that... Um, a redundancy and other things implemented and definitely um, add those to your product. Let's go ahead and take a look at a demo where we will see firsthand the interaction between Swagger Hub and Azure API Management. So what we will do here is delve into the actual demo. So let's start our journey in Swagger Hub where we have an API named the simple API first example. Here we are working with uh, some JSON and an open API spec where we would like to collaborate and utilize API first design. On the left-hand side, we have the code editor. On the right-hand side, we have the UI view. Both affect each other. On the left-hand side, a change will come and affect the view that we see here on the right-hand side where we can try the API, we may peruse it, and definitely we can send it to mock endpoints. But our goal is to send this API spec here to Azure API Management to enable API-first design. So let's take a look at the integration. So I have two integrations at present. So I have Opulent ASP, which is Azure DevOps, and APM Demo uh, API First. And that is um, the integration to API management. So let's go ahead and add one. So I pick API management. And I've already done this previously, so I won't need to redo it. But for you, a simple login and some role-based access control, and you're on your way. So let's take a look at this in action. So I'm going to execute the rendition. And let's see what occurs. So we get a... Um, sort of a pop-up here telling us that the integration was executed and fantastic. This is going to go and virtualize the code here and insert it into Azure API Management and we're on our way. Shifting gears, now we're in Azure API Management. Fantastic. We can now take a look at what the effects are of that virtualization where the API is now ingested and virtualized into our appliance. Excellent. So now what we've seen, let's do a small recap. In Swagger Hub, we actually took the code and the design that we're working on and we're able to transport it into API management. So as if I were to put my hat on now as the product owner, I can now go into the portal and start perusing the API that I want to showcase to my consumers, those that are intended to utilize the API for that developer experience. And I would like to work on having a great experience on that first call from those practitioners. The practitioners also utilize the try it feature here and peruse at will. 
The next element of concern here is the actual flow. So now that the Maya Inventory API is inserted, I'd like to alter the flow from Swagger Hub to not go to a mock or another appliance, but have it flow directly to the My Inventory API in the secure flow where I've deployed my API management. So this will lead to fewer bugs later on, and especially those related to security. Um, when we have a whole bunch of security appliances added along uh, that path. Let's talk about design a little bit here. What is the experience that you have when you are doing API design first in API management? Little known fact, if we go to the front end um, artifact here, there is a JSON viewer. And in that JSON viewer, it does allow me to do things that are similar to Swagger Hub, where I can add operations, definitions, and tag objects. But how do I collaborate in this element? How can I say that at number 12, I would like to change the name of this uh, operation, I need to put this as a post, and I would like to collaborate. Well, here comes Azure, uh, Swagger Hub, and it's construct for collaboration. So do note here that it does have the possibility to augment and share and collaborate with other practitioners, whether they are the team, uh, those that are intended to consume it, internal, external. What we want to do here is actually look at the resolve comments and the open comments that we've worked uh, in unison with the practitioners. So once again, let's take a look at a real live example here. So at a certain line, someone said that a 200 OK was not good practice and we could change it for a 201. This was remediated in the code. Um, you can definitely go here and interact with the integration team, citizen developers, everyone feels like they have been added to the conversation and it creates great synergies amongst team. This was uh, a great uh, team building artifact for myself. Shifting gears to this uh, server view here, uh, you'll notice that there are more than one. So I have four different server views here that I can utilize. The top one being Swagger Hub, which is the mock engine. Uh, what we wanna do here is illustrate that we can take the rendition that we have here and fire it to different elements. We don't always want to go to the mock. We at times want to go through all of the security appliances and the secure flow through our API manager to detect security issues uh, very early in the process. This said, let's talk about these security issues. Let's talk about shift left considerations. Now, this is a term that we normally see in the security landscape, right? Shift left security. Um, what this entails is usually before writing any line of code, all of the security appliances are created and they are scanning automatically before deploying to anything, even on, on my local machine. When we think of this in the API um, design first landscape, we think of it uh, in this manner. We want to move the API design, which I just showcased earlier in the process, and the flows of our APIs through the security appliances in our secure flow has to be done immediately, even when we are starting off and just mocking. Um, here I have a list of different servers. You'll notice that the bottom one there, we have a firewall app gateway. So that could be going to an IDS IPS uh, element. We could be firing directly to the API manager portal. Um, these usually have appliances in front of them and we definitely want to utilize them. What does a, a natural flow look like? Well, here, Azure Application Gateway enabled with a web app firewall. Azure API management, and then the mocking that we do in its backend to pretend that there is an API there. By doing this, we will see that there are two different scenarios that usually arise. Scenario one, the developer is utilizing code first. With this code first, he has not deployed the secured flow where the API is intended to reside. Post-production of the release, the WAF is blamed for bad API design where a string is defined as such. So we have a string here instead of a JSON array. It goes Canada, pipe, USA, pipe, Mexico. What occurs here is on the 13th rendition, this is going to trigger a signature in the WAF and it's going to cause a 403 forbidden. Now let's take a look at what can occur here if we actually use scenario number two. We're going with design first. We're in Swagger Hub. We're designing. We're testing early the different mocks that we have in that secured flow that I discussed, right? Not necessarily mocking, uh, but we're going through the secured flow. 
The WAF is monitored, the poor array string design is caught, and the fix is issued. So here we have a, a natural JSON array, something quite simplistic. This would have been caught at design time. Why is there a funny string with a whole bunch of pipe delimiters would have been fixed at design time? If it would have been missed, it would have went through the WAF and got caught when somebody would have selected quite a few different countries, and we would have done our shift left due diligence, both in design and security. Moving along, so now you've got a design you're working on, you virtualize it, it goes to the API management appliance, you are doing mocks, everything is grand. It's now time to scaffold or code gen for you to get some code. Do take a look here, we have an Azure API management extension for Visual Studio Code where you can effectively scaffold if need be. What occurs here is you will go ahead and select the API and then you can scaffold an Azure function, effectively creating an Azure function for you to uh, work with. What does this look like in Swagger Hub? Well, Swagger Hub offers quite a few other different uh, options. It offers the client SDK or a server hub or the documentation pane or simply downloading the JSON of an API. Let's take a sample here of a real world scenario where I'm going to select the server stub and I want to generate the code for an ASP.NET Core hosted element. But before doing so, remember when I select, selected my two integration points? I had one for DevOps and one for API management. I showcased the API management one. Well, now let's just take a look at what occurs if I were to integrate Azure DevOps services in this flow. Well, there are two ways of working. The middle uh, icons there, you can actually download this element, work off your workstation. But if you use the integration, it will go and push the code into your DevOps uh, rendition. And you can also uh, implement versioning and branching uh, if need be. Do note that this is also available in GitHub as well. I'd like to take uh, two minutes to talk to you about a real world scenario to give you some value. Here we have Azure API Management fronting Azure Service Bus for externally facing clients. I have an Azure API Management in the middle. What it's doing is effectively fronting a queue for me. Why would I want that? When I have to share constructs from a queue, I have to share credentials. I have to share a schema. I have to share the address of the service bus. But what if I pretended that all of this was fronted by API Management and it was all an API. Well, let's look at how we can do this. By going to Swagger Hub and doing the API first design, I designed a contract, send it over to Azure API, API Management where I'm now mocking, utilizing design first and the open API spec. And now I can start firing requests and seeing how that API management uh, appliance reacts. Um, the second step would be to apply APM request validation. When somebody puts something on a queue and it's erroneous, we end up with a poison message. Uh, that can be problematic because it's already ingested in your backend. But here we're going to utilize APM request validation, send it back to the client, please remediate, send it back. If it's good, we're going to do a service bus call uh, by using a REST construct, construct to the service bus, and away you go, the flow uh, is now done. The main advantage here is my client at step number three, who is sending in those requests, can peruse my portal, can onboard in the same natural way, which it has already done in my API program. And lastly, if you look at the red element there, no functions to do data transports. I don't need to have 15 of these on my program to simply take something from APM and transport it over to a service bus. So what did we see? In today's session, let's take a look at the benefits recap. So first and foremost, and at the forefront is collaboration. So when I think of Azure API Management and its synergy with Swagger Hub, I think of a service that is complementary. And this, that the uh, Swagger Hub is there to enable you to do collaboration. So utilize the collaboration and sharing features, which uh, they differ based on if you have the free tier or the more advanced tiers, but do take a look. Absolutely fantastic. And one of the first tools to get going if you want to do API first design with API management. The second element is this whole notion of shift left, not only for security. Designing um, can be done in early stages, and it does enable you to do a few different things. By virtualizing very early, your API product owner can now go to your API 
portal and do some oversight and testing and project himself as the consumer that's intended to utilize the portal. So gets the eyes on the prize nice and early. As the practitioner and your security team, we are firing executions to the security appliances early in the life cycle. So I showed you the two different scenarios. We can catch things really early, even during API design. If there is a malicious or erroneous design, we will catch it early in the life cycle. The earlier, the better. Last and not least, if you want to use some of the more premium uh, offerings in Swagger Hub, validations and contract testing is available and should be part of your program. Do peruse and augment. Lastly, this is what I call choose your own adventure and scaffolding. So scaffolding is the art of code generation. We took a little bit uh, of a look at what was inside of Swagger Hub and what uh, was available to Azure Functions. But in the end, familiarity is productivity. The only thing that I suggest is that you standardize on something, not to have the spaghetti code of many years ago. Select something, put it into, into your life cycle, and away you go. This said, I'd like to propose this call of action for you, uh, and we will be sharing these links. Start off with the integration into APIM, give it a test. The Swagger free rendition and API manager and dev allow you to do so. Take a look at the code generation features and discover for yourself how API management and Swagger Hum are complementary to each other. And on that, I'd like to thank you for your time today.